the birth rate in the United States and across the West is declining. In the US, it's the lowest it's ever been. And this is a problem. In this video, I'll go over the data that shows the declining birth rate. I'll explain why the declining birth rate is a problem, and I'll go over some potential theories as to the cause of the declining birth rate. From an article in the New York Times, quote, in 2016, the fertility rate in the United States was the lowest it has ever been. There were 62 births per 1,000 women aged 15 to 44, down 1% 1 from 2015, end quote. Stories like this were reported in the Washington Post and the New York Times, among many other publications. These stories come from a CDC report, which analyzed birth rates and showed that there is a large decline among teen births. There's a smaller decline in births for women aged 20 to 24, and there's an upward trend in births for older women, especially women in their early 40s. In other words, we're doing a good job at reducing teen pregnancies and getting those under control. We're doing a good job as well at helping older women be fertile. But women in their early 20s are having fewer kids, and the overall birth rate is going down and has been for decades. This story doesn't sound so bad so far. Fewer teen pregnancies is a good thing, and helping older women have children is a good thing too. We could break down this fertility data a little bit further using Pew Research and see that in the US, by demographics, white women are the least fertile with an average of 1.8 children per woman, compared to Hispanics, who are the most fertile, with an average of 2.4 children per woman. The fact that white women are the least fertile may help us explain why this trend of declining birth rates is happening across European countries as well as in the United States. The numbers that I've shown in this video are going to focus on the U.S. in particular, but much of what is going to be said will apply outside of the U.S. This is a map of fertility sourced through Wikipedia based on data from the CIA World Factbook. The key for this map is in the left-hand corner, and it's describing children per woman. The US, Canada, Australia, and much of Europe are all in the 1 to 2 range, which is similar to what we saw in the Pew Research data for white women. Let's take a second to talk about replacement rate. Replacement rate is a concept that means the number of babies per woman a population would need in order to remain constant in number. In other words, the number of children a woman would need to have in order to replace her and her partner. This number is slightly above two. You need two babies to replace the mother and father, and then you need slightly more than that because some children will unfortunately die. Therefore, replacement rate is slightly above two, and just how slightly above two it is depends on how dangerous an area you live in. For the US and most of the developed world, this is something like two, 205, 208, somewhere in that range. Replacement rate is an important concept to understand for this topic because it tells us that these countries on this map, the ones in blue, have diminishing populations. They have fertility that is below replacement. Or at least these countries would have diminishing populations if it were not for immigration. The U.S. has had fertility rate below replacement since 1979, but the population has continued to grow thanks to millions and millions of immigrants coming into the country. Now that we know the U.S. does face a declining birth rate, and we understand the concept of replacement rate, we can talk about some of the problems caused by having a declining birth rate. There are at least three problems that I'll go over in this video. First, the population will age. The age of a population is the average age of all members of that population. When you stop adding new members to your population, then the average age will simply go up over time. An aging population is a problem because old people like to retire, and when they retire, society ultimately becomes responsible for them, as in they are no longer actively working a job and paying taxes, but they are collecting retirement benefits. This graph from the Peter G. Peterson Foundation shows the number of workers per retiree. The trend is heading down, as we have more and more retirees and fewer and fewer workers. In the 1950s, the ratio of workers per retiree was about seven, seven workers per retiree. And around 2010, the number is down to three. That's about 2.9. The benefits that retirees collect from the government are paid for by the current taxpayers, i.e. the workers. When the population ages, the ratio of workers per retiree goes down, and that means fewer and fewer workers are paying for the benefits of more and more retirees. That suggests that either the economic burden on the workers will expand, meaning they'll pay more in taxes, or the benefits for the retirees will contract, meaning they'll have a harder time living 
with reduced benefits. With fewer births, there are simply fewer people. Fewer people means fewer workers and fewer consumers. That means less goods and services get produced and consumed, and that means the economy will shrink. Economies benefit from scaling up and grow more efficient as they get larger. With a falling birth rate, not only will the economy shrink, it may grow less efficient as well, requiring more effort to produce more goods and services. With the shrinking economy, the government, which consumes a portion of the productive output of its people, will be less well-equipped to carry out its mission in the world. The country will diminish in terms of political, economic, and military relevance on the world stage and will be less well-equipped to influence the world in the way that the shrinking country desires. A third and final reason that falling birth rates in the U.S. and across the West are bad is that the falling birth rates represent a discordant order, meaning an order that is opposed to how things should be. Ideally, the poor populations of the world would be declining and the rich populations expanding. This is ideal because it means that the rich, developed nations of the world could educate their children and then send forth doctors and lawyers and businessmen to the developing world to help these developing countries develop into prosperous countries. Instead of this harmonious order that I'm describing, where wealthy countries send educated people out to help the poor of the world, we have the inverse, a discordant order. In reality, the poor and fertile countries, like Africa, send out large numbers of people to the rich, developed world to be exploited performing demanding manual labor in exchange for relatively small salaries. In the U.S., this is represented by the exploitation of undocumented labor from, from Central and South America. People from countries in those regions come to the United States to work in fields like agriculture or restaurant services, where they are exploited as a source of cheap labor. Why should the poor suffer to provide cheap labor for the rich, when instead the rich could provide education and resources for the poor? To sum up where we're at so far, we know that the birth rate in the U.S. and across the West in general is declining. We know that falling birth rates are a problem because it means an aging population, a shrinking economy, and a discordant global order. But why are birth rates declining? I'll offer four possible explanations that may explain, to some extent, reasons why the fertility rate is declining. Any of these explanations may be contributing more or less to the issue. The first explanation is money. Families don't have enough money to have the number of children that they want to have. As a consequence, they have fewer or no children. This is a graph that shows wages, wages and not net compensation, wages in inflation-adjusted dollars divided by quintile between the years 1979 and 2016. What the graph is showing you is that the middle and lower classes are effectively flat between these years. In other words, between 1979 and 2016, the middle and lower classes have not seen an increase in wages in inflation-adjusted dollars. The upper class, on the other hand, especially the top 1%, has seen significant gains in the past 40 years. Imagine working for four decades and not getting a raise. Metaphorically, that's akin to what we're talking about. And while you haven't been getting a raise, the price of things like education and healthcare have been going up. And both of these things are things that a baby might need a lot of. So ask yourself, does this make you more or less inclined to have children? And then apply that same hypothetical reasoning that you just considered to the population at large. And I think it starts to make sense that people are having fewer children. Perhaps the harsh climate for the poor and the lower class makes them less likely to have kids because they have increasing doubts that they will be able to afford having children and be able to have a nice life for themselves and be able to give their children a nice life. The harsh economic climate that we just reviewed is connected to the next potential explanation. With wages essentially flat over the past 40 years, Households have taken to employing multiple members in order to gain or maintain financial ground. This graph from Pew Research shows the portion of dual income households between 1960 and 2010. The biggest change is the dramatic rise in dual income households, from 25% in the 1960s all the way up to 60% in 2010. Households become dual income mainly by having the wife start working for a wage. If a woman is at work, she obviously has less time for more domestic pursuits, like having and raising children. 
As a woman concentrates on her career, she will perforce have less time available for children. Perhaps women becoming wage earners is partially responsible for the decline in birth rate. This next possibility is the most obvious one. As time and technology have progressed, along with social awareness, women have more and more means available to them to control their reproduction. This idea refers to everything from condoms to abortions, but basically there is a raft of medical capabilities that can reduce the production of babies. Perhaps the availability of such technology is partially responsible for the decline in birth rate. A paper in the Human Reproduction Update Journal considered this hypothesis and ultimately found a plausible correlation between the use of oral contraceptives and a decline in fertility in the United States, among other Western countries. This graph is from that paper, and it shows the portion of the population using oral contraceptives plotted against the fertility rate. How you read this graph is the squares represent the portion of the population using oral contraceptives, using the position on the right-hand y-axis, and the line represents the fertility rate using the position on the left-hand y-axis. And what this basically shows is that as use of oral contraceptives jumps up from 0% of the population in 1960 before the availability of oral contraceptives, as the use jumps up from 0 to about 20 or 30%, fertility rate also experiences a steep decline and stays low. The other things theory is my own term for when a change in a population's behavior is explained by the subjects choosing to pursue other things. Rather than pursuing relationships and having children, people now have options available to them that were not available to people in the past, such as watching YouTube videos or Netflix, browsing the internet, playing video games, etc. The more hours that people pour into these pursuits, the less time they'll have available for producing and caring for children and that could lead to less fertility. A CNN article references a study from the Archives of Sexual Behavior saying, quote, American adults had sex about nine times fewer per year in the early 2010s than they did in the late 1990s, end quote. And this reduction in sexual experiences was not explained by work or pornography. Nine times fewer per year is a reduction of about 14%. Perhaps this reduction is explained by the other things theory. I hope I've shown three things with this video. First, birth rates are declining. This is true in the US, but also across the West as well. Second, falling birth rates are a problem. They're a problem because they imply an aging population, a diminished workforce, a weakened and inefficient economy, consequent declining prominence on the global stage, and a discordant global order. Third, and finally, I hope to have offered a few possible explanations for why this decline in birth rate may be happening. The theories I've proposed are bad economics. People are too poor to have the number of children they want. Women are more involved with work and have less time for child rearing. The usage of birth control means that fewer babies are being born, and that men and women have other things to occupy their time these days rather than having and raising children. If I had more time to dedicate to this inquiry, I try to validate my potential explanations by exploring the extent to which they are true of other, more fertile populations. So for example, we know that populations in Africa or in South and Central America are more fertile than populations in the US and in Western Europe. So I could take potential explanations that I've offered and see whether and to what extent they apply in those countries where people are more fertile and use that as evidence to show whether the theory was true or false. So for example, if we were considering the bad economics explanation, then we could look at extremely fertile countries and ask whether or not the wages for the poor and lower classes in these countries had been increasing, staying stagnant, or declining. If we saw that these countries had improving economic conditions for their poor and lower class and a strong birth rate from their poor and lower class, then we might conclude that there is something to the economics explanation. There are some additional threads that can be followed up on in future videos if this information proves interesting to people. For example, what can or should be done about the dwindling birth rates? How do things like race, income, or education relate to fertility? Does the rise of single motherhood have anything to do with birth rates? I have a personal theory, too, about the rise in online dating, making relationships more transactional and less about creating families. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. 
If you want to see more content in a similar style, go ahead and click subscribe. Thanks for your time.